So we've talked a lot about Angular, React, and all these modern JavaScript frameworks, but today we're actually going to get started setting up your development environment, and that means installing things like Node and NPM. Node enables us to run JavaScript everywhere on the server as a command line tool, and NPM is the package manager that comes bundled with Node. NPM is the leading package manager today for everything JavaScript. Um, if you're familiar with some Java development, this is like similar to Maven. If you're not familiar with Maven, NPM is essentially a repository to house dependencies within our application. So instead of going to the jQuery site and downloading jQuery or React or Angular, or whatever you're needing in your application, we can pull it here from NPM. And this is super useful because when you're committing your code to a repository such as GitHub, you don't want to be saving all your dependencies and causing bloat and really making it harder to pull down that project. We just want to commit our code and then we can have NPM download all the dependencies it needs, whether it's another developer or another continuous integration build system, kind of like Jenkins. Now they can just clone the project and then NPM install all the dependencies. As soon as you go to the nodejs.org site, you can download the installer, open it, and just accept all the defaults, hit continue. Agree, because we've read all this. Install. And you'll notice it has the default path to where this installed both Node and NPM. And we can verify that these paths are in our path variable so that we can issue NPM and Node from anywhere on the computer. And we do. So it looks like we're all right. So if I ask the computer where's Node and where is NPM, you'll actually see the files and it's registered. So we seem to be all good. And now let's try to test it. We'll install a package globally so we can issue that command anywhere. And I'm going to install the Create React App. It's a little tiny CLI to make React apps uh, easy to spin up. And so I'll say dash G to say global. And we get an error, and it's a permission error. So what's going on here? If we look, it's telling us we're missing the permissions to a certain directory because Node or NPM really is trying to install this package, this tool, into a folder, and we don't have administrator rights over that. So we can actually double check and ask NPM where they're saving all these tools with the following command. And yep, okay, so it's going user local lib, and that's not in our user directory. Now this is a permission user, so we can just say sudo npm install dash g then our package, and that's going to work, but it's going to be a quick band-aid to a solution, and we actually would rather make a new directory and point these npm installs somewhere else. Because as we write automation scripts, we don't want to be prompted for passwords, and we really don't want to just change the ownership of a directory all, all over the place. So the trick will actually be to make a new folder within our home directory, a hidden folder, maybe call it npm packages. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is tell npm to install all the tools in here. So when we use a, a global tool, we don't get that permission error. And we can do that by using the npm config set prefix command and point it to that folder that we just created. And now we'll ask NPM, where are you going to store our NPM tools with the NPM list command? And it's showing our new folder. So that's exactly what we want. That's good. So let's try an install with the dash G without the sudo command and see if it works. We'll reinstall that create react app CLI. And installed fine. Awesome. So now let's see, can we use it? Well, something's wrong here because it's we know we installed it, but it's not registering. So what's going on? Well, we made a new folder, but it's not in our path variable. So you can see when I go to the folder here, we have the binary and there's the create react app CLI. But when I echo the path, that folder is not included. So our computer doesn't really know that we want to use that. So to make our computer aware of this new directory, we are going to actually edit the path variable and append on this new directory. And we'll do that by creating a new bash RC file. If you don't have one, it'll create it. Now I already did this. So then you can see um, it's already made and it has path equals path colon and then the whole path of where we want to point that. And then we want to include that bin folder. And then we'll go to our bash profile because this will be executed every time the profile spins up and we'll tell our computer to source that bash RC and then update that path variable. And so then we'll also do it here now because I don't want to restart the whole terminal. And I'm getting an error. So what's going on here? Path command not found. So we'll go back to the bash RC and maybe see something I did wrong there. And I do believe the problem is this space right here. So I will remove that. Okay. So that's good. No errors now. Let's try it again. Which create React app. Awesome. So now it's aware of our tool in the NPM packages that we created, and that is now under our new owner. So we should have no problem installing and using these tools. So let's give it a test real quick. 
And again, the tool is not that important here. I'm just showing you a package and it happens to be the create react app uh, CLI. And so we're just using this to demo the whole purpose. And as you can see, it works fine. So that's awesome. It looks like we are all good to go. And before we end the video, let's talk about node versions because there are so many versions out there. There's been a lot of development and certain packages will require certain versions. We installed the latest and greatest and it. Probably not the best idea because most of our common packages might run on the uh, legacy node 894 here. So you might have situations where you have to toggle between different versions of node a lot. And a real easy way to do this if you're on a Mac is a tool called N. N makes it easy to install different versions of node and flip flop between different ones. And if you're on Windows, you're going to want to use something like the NVM, the node version manager, because N is a Mac only tool at this point. So we can install N just like our other global NPM packages with NPM install dash G. And remember that dash G means global to make a tool available everywhere. If we did not put that dash G, it would install it to the local NPM packages of our project. And to install a new version of node, you can say N version and then that version. And you'll notice I got some permission denied here. And that's because I actually don't have ownership to the folder where node is being installed because node isn't being installed with my NPM packages. So you will actually have to say sudo n and then your version. If this is a problem, you can change that ownership, but we're not really worried about that because we're not writing scripts to change different versions of node. That's a very uncommon scenario, but you might. And so if that is an issue and you need that ownership, you can definitely change that. And to toggle between any of the versions you've already installed, you can just hit n and it'll pull up a nice little menu and then you can toggle between or select one you need. And lastly, we'll want some kind of IDE to actually develop our code in. And I'm going to recommend Visual Studio Code. This is just what I use, what so many people are using. And it's really nice. It's completely free. And it has everything you'd want out of a nice IDE, especially with JavaScript, IntelliSense, um, debugging, and it has terminals built in. So it's a really nice IDE. I like it. But by all means, use the one you're most comfortable with. If you'd use JetBrains or something like that, go ahead. There's no right or wrong answer here. This is just what you'll see me using and maybe others. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out. And if you had issues setting up your own environment, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible.